Welcome back to my channel everyone, it is good to be back. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how to transform your average potato into these beautiful potato waffle crisps, as I'm calling it, and pairing it with an herb aioli with some fresh garden herbs. So, without further ado, let's dive in. All right, to start this off, add an egg yolk to a mixing bowl with a little bit of Dijon mustard, a pinch of salt, and a splash of cold water, and then you're gonna blend it all together. You are more than welcome to use a whisk to start the emulsification, but using some sort of electric device that maintains a high rate of air incorporation helps it from splitting at the beginning stages of adding the oil. With that said, slowly start to add in the grapeseed oil in a steady, thin stream, and about every 10 seconds or so, stop the pour and make sure that it's being incorporated into the yolk evenly. Once it starts to thicken up and turn a pale yellow, you can increase the speed of the pour and switch to a whisk, since at this stage, there's a solid emulsified base to work off of, and it isn't as prone to splitting. Continue pouring until it becomes very, very thick and almost white in color, just like you'd imagine a mayo to look like. Also, you can put a towel below the bowl since there's a little elbow grease needed at this stage because mayo can get pretty darn thick. After that's all whipped up, chop up a few select herbs to add into the mayo, along with any other flavors, condiments, or special flares you'd like it to have. Then cover it with plastic, making sure that the plastic is touching the mayo, otherwise it can develop a skin on the top. Then refrigerate until you are ready to use it. Next up is the potatoes. So get a pot on medium heat that's filled about a quarter of the way up with grapeseed oil and a bowl lined with some paper towels. Then grab a few large russet potatoes, the bigger the better, and a mandolin that has a fluted or ridged blade on it to achieve that waffle-like cut. Here I'm using a French mandolin, but there are plenty of slicing devices out there that will do the same exact thing. Now the trick behind the cut is to alternate the direction of the potato every time you slice it in order to get that cross section aesthetic. This will take a few careful practice slices, adjusting and warming up to the mandolin if it's your first go at it, but once you have that down, slice up all the potatoes and get ready to fry them. After they're all sliced up, check the temperature of the oil by carefully dipping one of the potatoes in, and if it starts to sizzle and float right away, it is ready to go. If you wanna be a bit more cautious and more precise, check it with the thermometer, and the desired frying temp should be around 350 to 375 degrees Fahrenheit. Once that's settled, drop in several at a time, making sure not to overcrowd the pan, otherwise you'll end up with the potatoes sticking to each other and the oil won't be able to keep up with the drop in frying temperature. But once they're in, give them a stir and the occasional flip, transfer them to the bowl that's lined with paper towels, sprinkle them with just a little bit of kosher salt and repeat the process until all the sliced potatoes are crispy and beautiful. Once it's all finished up and everything's ready to go, it's time to plate. So here I'm just gonna use a little bit of parchment paper in a bowl, stack the potato waffle crisps as tall as I can get them, and then pair them with a little side dish of the aioli, and that is good to go. There you guys have it, potato waffle crisps at your service.
All right, these look really, really good. Um, I love the texture of these. It's just one of those things that's almost just naturally appetizing when you look at it. It has that like waffle crisscross look. It obviously is a potato, very crispy, so all very good things. And uh, I'm excited to try these. So let me do a couple dips and uh, run you through the flavors. And let me dive in. <laughs> Extra crispy. Ooh, wow, that's good. The texture and the mouthfeel of these is wonderful. Mm. Tons of herbs. You can taste just about every individual herb in there other than the, um, the parsley, just because that's you know not as prominent as the rest. The thyme, sage, basil, rosemary, just really good. I think the only thing that I'd be missing in this that I'd want is like a chive or maybe like a small diced red onion or something like that. And maybe a bit more Dijon just because I like mine with a little bit more um, acidic flair to it. Um, but at the same time, this is really, really good. I love how these turned out. Mm. Very, very good. What I love about this dip or aioli is that it's very versatile. The base is a mayo, so you can really add a lot of different things to it. You can definitely go the special sauce route with the uh, mayo, ketchup, Dijon, pickles, and some diced onion or something like that. That's really good. I almost did that. But these are really simple. I know this is a really quick video, but it's kind of cool seeing how it's made and um, you know, sort of seeing the, the ground up production of what it takes to make a chip like this. Um, it kind of reminds me of like Ruffles or you know that that ridge cut type of chip, but a little bit cooler because you know it's perforated and has all little holes in it. Very, very cool. I definitely recommend you guys trying this out. Uh, this is a huge crowd pleaser if you guys make these for a bunch of people. Try it out, tell me what you think. If you guys enjoyed this recipe, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel if you enjoyed this video. Comment down below for future video requests, things you wanna see, and I will see you guys next time with another recipe. Later, folks.